Hello, this is Angelo with your Project Next Accelerator bonus, and this is Digital Growth Masterclass number five. So, why are we here? Let me remind you. I feel that I keep getting this vibrational question from many of you. Why, since Project Next modules keep progressing, we keep talking about mindset? And let me ask you this. When Tony Robbins told you that it is 80% mindset and 20% everything else, did you buy this? Do you accept with this premise? Because if you do, why focus on improving the 20% and not focus on the 8%? And let me give you my side of the story, my answer, and the thing that has been validated for me many times over in the past decade. If you have the right mindset, all the answers, everything else that you need will appear to you. Because if you have absolute certainty about something, you don't, you stop second guessing, you stop looking for answers. You're there. You are there. You feel it. And this is all that matters to me, for you to fully resonate, as we said many times in the past and as I'm going to repeat many times in the future, fully, fully resonate with who you want to become. Fully resonate with the success that you truly desire for your digital product. Not the success that you think you deserve, not the success that you think you can achieve from where you are right now, but what you truly desire. The level of success means receiving a certain remuneration, not only financial remuneration, but overall, because you have also sentimental remuneration. It feels good to help others, right? And also a level of value. So it goes both ways, giving and receiving. Remember, success goes both ways. I deserve everything I want and everyone deserves my best self. It goes both ways. So today's subject is states, habits, and the glue that holds everything together. States, habits, and the glue that holds everything together. So let's talk about states for a moment. I think I've mentioned this in one of my daily sorts of inspiration, but I wanted to give you like a, a, a deeper meaning of what states mean. Remember, Tony Robbins talks a lot about states and how important it is to be in a good state, right? But what is a good state? So I realized, and this is very fresh, very new, okay? But as, as I always say, when I come up with something new, in my methodology that I immediately find value, the first thing that I think, the first thing that I think is always to share it with you. And maybe it, it is of value to you as well and it helps you grow as well, right? So what I discovered is that I cannot have like an infinite number of states or like dozens and dozens of states and have clarity of what I'm doing. So I asked myself, which is the minimum number of states that I can find myself in so that I can have clarity where I am at each point of my life? So I, I uh, narrowed it uh, down to three states. So I only need three states and I can do anything from these three states, right? I, everything in my life fits into th these three states. I demand myself. It will not always happen. I will find myself maybe in a fourth or fifth state that I do not desire, like an angry state at some point of my life. But if I am good and if I create this habit, as we will talk about habits later, and if I master these three states, I will find myself more and more in these three states. So remember, just because you cannot do something right now, it does not mean you should not design it right, right? Good. So state number one is the launch state. Okay? So the launch state is the state where you're doing something 
that is, requires, let's say, 101% of your effort and of your concentration and everything, like an exaggerated effort for a short period of time. Why a short period of time? Because it is not sustainable. This is what I've done to support Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi for the Own Your Future and Project Next launch. Okay, so I was in a launch state without realizing it for about two months. But this was not sustainable. I was sleeping like four hours a day and I was working like from the remaining 20, I was working like 18 of them, like fully concentrated work. So this is not sustainable. I had to let go of some things that I truly want to do on a daily basis, like exercising, even if it is a mild walk. All right. I had to let these things go and put more energy and attention to support on your future challenge. Maybe you've watched my a challenge which was a 31 day challenge the captain of my soul challenge right and so this is a launch state this is something that you do to change things so maybe you say i cannot wait like for ages to do project next i will put myself on launch mode for like a week and i will finish the course right this is a launch state or maybe uh, right now everything goes well in my business but you know, I've had like a minor fracture on basketball, right? Whatever. So I am on launch mode with my health for like two, three weeks. This is the launch state where you do something exaggerated, which is not sustainable to do it every, like on an evergreen mode. Then you have G for glide mode. When you're gliding, imagine the airplane, right? The airplane. In, in the beginning, the airplane is on launch mode and the uh, thrust is on 100% and everything works, has to work, you know, like perfectly for the airplane to reach the altitude of 35,000 feet. And then the airplane is gliding and the thrust level goes back to, let's say, like 20% and sustains this level for maybe as long as you wish, basically, but as long as the fuel lasts, right? So the thing is, for you, glide mode means that it is something that you can do basically forever. This is what it means to be on a glide mode. But let me tell you this. This mode is the sneakiest mode of all. Because most people are not gliding. Most people are disintegrating on every level. Because they think that glide mode is to let things go and go about my habits. But the thing is, the habits that you have today are the habits that will not get you anywhere. Because as you want to grow in life, you need to grow in habits and mindset as well. So the thing is, when we are talking about glide mode, we still remind ourselves this sustainable level of energy we need to put to not only keep ourselves on 35,000 feet, but also to grow even a little bit on a daily basis on some level of our lives. This is crucial because as you move on in life, you will find ourself, yourself being like a puppet of your habits. 95% of what we think and do every single day is based on our habits. And this is why we'll talk about habits later, right? So remind yourself this. Glide mode is not like a hammock mode, all right? Glide mode means that you're still putting effort, as much effort as you can do on a sustainable level, as much effort as you can put on a 365 days level, right? Good. Number three. Number three is our Zen mode. Zen mode means not that you're not doing anything, right? So, for example, when I was started working my first year in, uh, like, my career was 2001 after I finished up with the 12, uh, 20, uh, 12 no, 20 
uh, months of service in the army, which is like compulsory in Greece. I had to, uh, I was working for a Unilever. This was my uh, first placement, right? And uh, I was fascinated. I was working for Algida and I was so eager to learn everything and do basically like what everyone is doing together, right? In one job description. This, this is how much I loved my first job, right? So when, the, uh, when August arrived, or like end of July, I felt that everybody had, you know, was acting as if they were in a prison and they wanted to escape. And they were saying like, you know, uh, uh, this is enough. I cannot take another day and I have to go on vacation now. And this is, you know, like, and then when they came back after the August vacation, which was like for most people was like three to four weeks, right? Three to four weeks. To me, this is, <laughs> even now, I mean, I, ca I, cannot I cannot understand this level of, you know, taking yourself off the picture, but whatever. So when they got back, they were saying things like, I cannot even remember my password to log in on my computer and so on. So what I want to tell you is this. Some people somehow, you know, bought the idea that life is something like this. For 11 months, I am so stressed and I basically want to kill myself every single day. And I hate what I'm doing, but I keep doing it because there is a promise. In August, everything will go well for a month. And then I have to, again, put up with another 11 months of crap so that I can go on vacation again in August and forget about everything else. I mean, why? Since you can design your life why this is the case? Why do you accept this as your design stage? Remember, your design and what you have could be different right now, but this does not mean that your design should be something that you do, do not accept. Okay? You can have like clunkers right now, you know, like a $100 vehicle right now. And you can have the car of your dreams, which is a multi-million dollar vehicle in your design stage. It's up to you. You decide what you want your life to be, right? Good. So, what would be the greatest design of all from my perspective, right? You can alter it. You can take it as I give it to you, whatever you wish. For me, the Zen mode is actually the vacation mode, the Zen mode, but it is the vacation mode where you remember your destination, where you're going. You remember, you still remember it, but you recognize to yourself that to go all in is not sustainable, so you're taking time off for some important reasons. Reason number one, to enjoy life and create magic moments with yourself, like gazing at an amazing sunset in Santorini. You don't need anybody else there, right? Number two, with your family and friends, create magic moments with your family and friends. This is an important aspect of, of life. I think it was the last masterclass where I mentioned, actually, you need to put your life in the middle and then draw your business around it. But there is another reason as well. This is where magic ideas happen as well. So on Zen mode, and as you sail in the Aegean like I, like I love to do, at some point, like day three, day four, you say, like, Eureka, this is it. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to 10x my business. This is how I'm going to create amazing impact. This is my next digital product. Oh my God, how on earth didn't I think about it before? You couldn't think about it because you were between launch and glide mode and your mind was so filled with basically like trivial thoughts and trivial operations 
that the big ideas couldn't fit in. And when you emptied your mind and when you lowered your, you know, like your heart rate and your breathing rate and your living rate, and you attuned yourself with nature, everything (laughs) became so apparent to you. So this is why Zen mode is essential. For you workaholics, I suggest that you want to give Zen mode a chance. It does not mean that you're, you know, like letting go of your dreams. It does not mean that you're less productive. Actually, less productive is how it got Greece, where it got in the ancient times. You can read about that. This is how it it, it happened. All the philosophers that came up with all these amazing ideas that we still use today, they were not people like they were working on a factory all day and they were thinking about things. They were taking lots and lots and lots and lots of time off. And this is how they came up things. This is what we call divine inspiration. This is what we call, you know, like connecting yourself with You know, like putting the antennas up there and connecting with infinite intelligence, with universal intelligence. So this is why Zen mode is so vital, you know, so that you can go far, far greater than you would have had, like if you didn't have the Zen mode. But remember, it does not mean that you're letting go of anything because you're not stressed. Actually, there is, and this is maybe the most important thing of all, there is an underlying fourth state, like an imaginal fourth state, that it is like a base and uh, the basis of your life and the base for all three other states. And this is my friend, happiness. Happiness. So, no matter if you're on launch mode, glide mode, or Zen mode, you want to be on happy mode as well. But Angelo, I thought happiness means that I'm on vacation and then like 11 months, my state is not happiness, it's like uh, frustration, uh, anger, jealousy, um, stress and so on. No, you could be happy on launch mode as I was with Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi. Was my schedule like excruciating in terms of mental, emotional, and physical pain because of you know of everything I had to do? Yes, but you can still remember what Arnold Schwarzenegger said. You know, like you could be in the gym and you could do like you had to do like tw- twelve reps, but you're doing now like seventeen, and you're like you think you're dying, but you could be, you know, like smiling, and you could be feeling happiness inside. Because you're on a path to what you truly want to do in life. And this is what I want to talk to you about. Happiness, unconditional happiness, means that you don't want anything to happen right now for you to feel happy. Remember, it's like the lights. Like, when you turn on the light, it's like in its maximum, right? Whatever bulb you use it's on its maximum and as you put filters you start creating like a lower and lower and lower level of light and this is what we do with our conditions so in the beginning you have like happiness and this is our natural state as we uh, you know uh, every baby is happy until you mess up with with him or her you know this is it this is happiness And we start to mess up our lives and put conditions on the most important thing of all. Like maybe the second most important thing of all, because health is the most important thing of all. And I will give you a note on that later on as well. So these are the three plus one states, if you will, or three states. And the one which I shouldn't mention from now on ever again, because this is a must if you want to truly have a, what I feel is a successful life. You cannot have success without happiness. Don't be another example 
of people who have achieved everything and they're empty inside because they didn't get it. Get it now. Focus on happiness first and say, as I like to say, I am happy and march unstoppable towards my vision, whatever that vision is. And when I get that vision, I will start happy and march unstoppable towards my next destination and my next destination and my next destination. And if I fail like a thousand times and succeed once or maybe never, never succeed, I will still put myself on a happy state first, period. Unconditional happiness is my second priority behind keeping myself in good physical, emotional, and mental health. That's about it. You can buy this, you can, you know, like agree with me or disagree with me, but no matter what you do, you need a simple and sustainable model for your life. Otherwise, you will feel that your life is so messed up that you cannot ever control it, right? This is about it. So, let's talk about habits. And let's do like a multiple choice quiz right now. Like, who wants to be a millionaire? And I hope you get this right. <laughs> so, A. It's like 20. Okay, so I am ready for your quiz. This is the last question. If you answer right, you get one million dollars, right? Go. So, how many days do you need to install a new habit? A, 21, B, 30, or C, 66. I'm waiting for your answer. I can hear your heart pounding right now. You must get it right. A million dollars is at stake. Okay. So, by now, you must have given your answer. And I have one of my favorite books right now, which is The One Thing, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And let's go to, if you haven't read it, sorry, this is going to be like a, a small, I mean, I'm, maybe I will give you some insight, but it's worthwhile. We'll go on page 58, where there is a chart with an answer to our question. Day 66 habit forms. So, did you say C? Okay. Since I create the game and I create the rules, the answer is actually D. The hidden answer D so basically I saved myself like one million dollars and I don't have to give like many, many millions of dollars all around the world to you who answered uh, any of the first three questions. And the answer D is what on earth are you, oh, this is a, like a question mark. What on earth are you talking about? There is no such thing as one answer. Stop repeating trivial things that you read on books and you've heard someplace else. It doesn't take 21 days. It doesn't take 30 days. It doesn't take 66 days. It could take one moment and it could take one lifetime to create a habit. This is the right answer. And I know it is vague, but this is the right answer. And I will explain it to you right now. If you have a person who is weak on willpower and weak on the, the glue that holds everything together that I'm going to give you later. They will never form a new habit period because they don't care enough. If you have someone who truly cares enough or if the, comp if, if the reason is compelling enough, they will create a habit in one moment. They will install that habit 
and it will never go away again in their lives. Okay, let me give you an example to prove it. You have a baby, right? Like a, like a three-year-old baby, I don't know, something like that. Uh, and you tell them, I mean, the uh, one of the plates um, uh, in the kitchen is uh, turned on and it's hot. And uh, they might say, you know, like, mommy, why is this red? And everything else is like black. I don't know, something like that. And you say, well, because this is hot. And they, they're trying to, to touch it. And you say, you know, like, no, 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 don't touch it. It's hot. It's painful. And they, they would say, like, what are you talking about? I'm going to touch it, right? And they do like... <sighs> so what you're telling me now is that how children learn, right? They go on a hot plate for 66 days and they burn their figure for 66 consecutive days and this is how they formed the habit of not touching a hot plate. No, because the pain was so excruciating in the first place that they will not do it ever again in their lives. Right? Good. So, let me give you a very, very, very small physics lesson. And for you who love, you know, like arts and literature and so on, and you hated physics forever in your lives, bear with me for like 30 seconds. This is very, very simple. It's not like a, a class on engineering here. It's a class on mindset. But this is very important for you to remember why habits are created with intensity if you want to truly change your life quickly. So, what you have is power and time, okay? Energy is the product of power and time. So P times T equals E, energy, right? Very simple stuff. And you need energy to go from point A to point B. If you want to go from New York to LA, you need a certain amount of energy with your car, right? You need a certain amount of energy to do anything. And to go from one habit to the other, again, you need energy. So you can put a small amount of power of intensity over 66 days, or you can put a lot of intensity in three days and still change a habit. Let me give you an example. Because many of you who are watching this right now are also graduates of UPW. And it's, I mean, this is why I mentioned three days. So basically we have another thing in common. We are, most of, most of us at least, are graduates of UPW. And uh, for those of you who uh, are maybe even older than me, you know that UPW initially was three days and there, there was a fourth bonus day on nutrition and then it became a holistic thing on energy overall. So maybe I should put four days here, you know, just for the sake of it, since we are talking about UPW, right? So you put for four days, Tony puts you on a schedule. He knows from the beginning that this is not sustainable. He knows from the beginning that you will be on launch mode. But he knows that you have to go way above what you're doing on a daily basis, way outside of your comfort zone. What? To change. To change. And this is what creating new habits mean. So some people go to UPW once in their lives and they are priming for the rest of their lives. Isn't priming a habit? How on earth did they do it? Did they go to 66 UPWs? Or did they go to UPW for 66 consecutive days? No. They did it once with immense intensity, as Tony would tell you right now, and they changed. So, going back to who wants to be a millionaire, remember this. If you want to create new habits, you need fast, you need that intensity. And in order for you to have this intensity, you need 
the glue that holds everything together. And that glue, now I'm going to use this book for a good reason because before, you know, I was kind of, sorry about that, uh, who was it? Gary Keller and Jerry Pappas. And I, I, I'm not, I didn't want to like ridicule the book. I ridiculed a specific idea. But now let me tell you this. As long as you have more than one thing, I don't know how on earth you're going to get it. Because as the book says, you're, it's like chasing rabbits, two rabbits, you, you get none. And the thing is, the thing is that most of us feel, you know, like scared to choose one thing. Or we feel that if I choose like to focus on my digital product right now, I don't love my children enough. No, it means that you love yourself enough and your family enough that you will focus on this one thing right now to create a next level of wealth for your family and a next level of success for you and radiate this success to your family and your friends. So everybody wins when you win. Everybody wins when you express your super self. So I've uh, mentioned this before and I'm going to give you like the groundwork for the glue that holds everything together. This is, uh, I learned this from um, Darren Hardy where he learned it from somebody else. And this somebody else, he was on the deathbed. And I remember Darren Hardy saying that once I went there, you know, like to say goodbye, he, he would uh, leave his body in the next few hours, something like that. And I remember Darren Hardy saying that he grasped my hands so hard and he said, like, Darren, don't miss the point. So, we are talking about success with your next digital product. I get it. But I also got what Darren told me. And I want you to get what I am going to tell you right now. I have this cross, like, engraved in my mind. And I have an H, an F, and one, and an X. H, F, one, X. So the first quadrant is, it will never go away. It's my first and second priority in life. Number one, my health. Number two, my happiness. And the next thing is the F, where is my third and fourth priority in life my family and my friends. And this again will never go away, no matter how many businesses I have in the future. And this one is my number one thing. The thing that is my number one priority right now. But Angelo, you said that your number one priority is your health. So what this matters, what this means is that I always have one focused priority on a daily basis. But if my health or my happiness go down, like one level down, this is like a mental alarm to me. And I could let go of a project just because of that. And I've done this in the, in the past. So as uh, I've heard my mentor say in the past, I truly left money on the table because my number one priority is health. So I had another priority to do well on a certain project. Maybe I wasn't ready for it, so I got more stressed and more tired and so on. And I felt my health tilting to a point that I didn't want my health to go. So I let go of the project, I let go of the extra income and so on. This is how important it is to have these rules in your life. Actually, these rules, give you the freedom to have whatever you want. And the X, the X is forget about everything else. Forget about what a celebrity is doing right now or who broke up with who and so on. All the clutter that keeps you away from your dream life, from your ideal life, from your super self. And now you're ready because now we can truly focus 
on this one thing. You have the clarity to focus on this one thing. So, let me tell you this. How do you focus on this one thing always? And which is this glue that holds everything together? This glue that holds everything together is the level of your desire, your why. And if you cannot pay a lot of attention to what I'm telling you right now, let me tell you this. You don't have a strong why yet. You don't have a strong intensity to change. And since you don't have that, you will dismiss some new ideas. You will prolong the time that you, get, that you need to graduate from Project Next. You will prolong the actions that need to be taken so that you can reach a, le a certain level of success with your next digital product. So, if I am sitting here and you are sitting like one kilometer away or one mile away and I light up a match, would you see it? And the answer is no. But if I light up like a barbecue, would you see it? And the answer is like, maybe. What if I light up like a big fire, like the one that, you know, Tom Hanks built <laughs> on, uh, what was it, Castaway, to draw attention, you know, from the ships passing by? Would you see it? And the answer is yes. A mile away, I will see that fire. And talking about fire, let me give you like an example from Tony Robbins that you might have heard at UPW as well. And maybe give, give it a bit of a twist. So right now, your house is on fire. And you remember that in the living room, on the table, you have your wallet with $100 there. Would you go in and get your wallet? And the answer is, hell no. This is like too dangerous. The, I mean, the cost benefit is, you know, like too high. And if you had like um, a suitcase with $1 million, would you go in and get it? And the answer is maybe, you know, like I will get the million dollars and then I will pay like 10, 50,000 for, for the, you know, like the skin burns and so, so on. But if you had your baby, your three-month-old baby in the living room, would you go in and get it? And the answer then becomes, hell, yes. This is how important your why is. Your why is the reasons you want what you say you want. Because many times over, I've seen this so many times, even with myself, our desires are like so crappy and so, they, I mean, they mean nothing to us. Our desires that we bought from somebody else. And this is why things don't work. Because we missed step one. We didn't put a strong burning desire there. So what you want to do right now, like an exercise to, you know, take the most out of this uh, session is to go back and review what you want to do and why you want to do it. And let me give you this example. For those of you who are daring enough, leave this session of yours, like sitting down and putting like details to this, once you have at least one tier, because this tier would mean that you have connected with your heart and you're not talking, you know, like bullshit right now. You know, I want this, that, and I want uh, like a Ferrari and a million dollars. It's meaningless things, things that actually mean nothing to you, but you don't still get it. Because one million dollars, if you're not going to do anything with it, it means nothing to you. But you're not, you know, accepting this because you bought this idea from a book or something. But what I'm talking to you right now is desires that truly make your heart sing. Desires. You get the million dollars, but get it to do something with it. To invest it in a non-profit or invest it in getting like your dream boat. I don't know. But still, you need to 
elevate your emotions because these emotions are the fuel that will help you get where you want to go. So this is the glue that holds everything together. Today, we talked about states and I talked to you about three states that you need to be, okay? You don't need anything else. Maybe you can alter these states and add the fourth one that you feel is important to you or whatever. And then I reminded you that there is an, a subtle underlying state of happiness that goes with every other state. And then we talked about habits and I showed you with physics, with science, that there is a way for you to narrow the window, the waiting time between where you are and where you want to go if you just tweak the knob of intensity and emotional intensity and, you know, like acceleration in your life. And then we talked about the glue that holds everything together. And I truly urge you to put yourself in a state that your why is so clear and so compelling that you jump off bed in the morning, that you cannot wait to do the next module of Project Next, that you cannot wait for us to meet next week for another mindset training. And you don't mind like, you know, like the 41 minutes that you're talking, that we are discussing right now elevating our emotions and our mindset because you know why you're doing this. This is what matters. This is what matters. When you have a strong enough why, the how is irrelevant. It will appear when you need it and you need nothing else to do. This is all that matters. To have a strong a compelling why, a reason to do all these things. And when this reason is there, you don't feel anything, you know, like you don't feel stress. You, any, any dragging emotion is out of the picture. And this is why I am so emotional and so passionate right now for you to pinpoint this why. Basically, right now, I, I will venture, uh, like, it's not a guess for me. I, I, I know this, but remember Dean talking about the dot, right? Well, to me, your why is 1,000 times more important than your dot. Because when you have a why, everything else happens like, like this. You don't even ask yourself if you're going to do it if you're going to stay up a bit later, if, you want to, if you're going to wake up a bit earlier, if you're going to do project next in a compressed period of time and graduate and do this, that, and the other, or if you're going to you know, hire someone to do your website and so on. These are trivial things then, because you know you have your why. And let me finish up with this. If you're not yet convinced, let me tell you a little story. I remember uh, watching one of the early interviews of uh, Mark Zuckerberg, right? And he was still, you know, like, he, I mean, Facebook was very successful already, but he still was, you know, like acting a bit childish, you know, on camera and so on. So he was uh, very composed while answering every single question. And the interviewer pushed him in the, in, at the end of the interview and he said, you know, like, why all this? Why do all that? Why, you know, do the lockdown and that you said that you would actually literally lo lock people inside the building until they come up with an answer and so on. And then he was like this, you know, like, and he goes like this and he says, like, I think two words, like connecting everyone. And you, you could see his face lighting up, connecting everyone. And and he immediately, he immediately changed his state because he immediately got reminded his why. This is why it is so important to know your why. Because then everything becomes easy. So I hope I convinced you to do some extra work right now and pinpoint your why or fine tune your why so much that you feel your heart connected and you feel that you're truly passionate to take charge of your financial future.
and take your digital product to the success that you truly desire. I, I am so grateful that you took like 45 minutes out of your time to discuss with me this important subject and actually go through this masterclass and still be here. I'm very grateful for that. I don't take this lightly. I truly respect your time. But this was a very important subject because this is the beginning. And if you take care of this, everything else takes care of itself. So talk to you next week with the next masterclass. Ciao, ciao.